and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Shiny and Oh So Bright, Volume 1, No Past, No Future, No Sun, the latest, well, I say album, but it's an EP by the Smashing Pumpkins, because apparently they can't be bothered to actually have it as a proper album. Why did you make me do this again? (laughs) Okay, hey. for, some, for some clarity here, I was a huge fan of Smashing Pumpkins back in high school. You know, back in the back in the mid '90s, uh, all the way up to like the early 2000s, I was listening to these guys religiously, just because this was my jam back then. I haven't listened to them much since then. So once I found out there was a new Smashing Pumpkins album, initially I got excited. Then I remembered it's 2018, and all of my childhood joys are apparently shit. So, first off, fuck you, Edmund. <laughs> fuck you for making me listen to this album. Oh well, my I, god. Why I, did I you feel, do this? Well, I feel it's appropriate to, for me to use this quote because of the um, screen name that you're currently using. Pass me as a dick. Yeah, um... For clarity, uh, in my little chat group that I've set up for me, me, Edmund, and a bunch of other friends, I'm pretending to be Ted Mosby because it's just, you know, it's funny to me. <sighs> and right now, I, I desperately wish I was meeting my meeting my wife rather than, well, let me rephrase that, future wife, not, not, not the past one. But, <laughs> God. Okay, so Smashing Pumpkins, let's get back on topic before, yes. we, before we avoid this topic. Smashing Pumpkins used to be an interesting mix of, like, emo music mixed with punk, like American punk, not British punk, because you'll bitch at me about four hours about that. (laughs) And, like, a nice collection of different kinds of music. It was always kind of mellow. He never really screamed a lot. It was more of, like, a laid-back, nice sound to it with a good good little, you know, feel to the music. It was nice. I enjoyed it. It was nice to throw it on. I suppose the best way to describe it is... Whilst it wasn't outright angry, there was sort of a dull roar. Yes. There was always some kind of tension below the surface, but it wasn't ridiculous. Mm. And I liked that about this group because, you know, I could listen to like Blink-182, which back in the 90s was screamo almost at points and Mm. shouting and, you know, proper punk, I guess. Then you'd swap over something like this. And it was nice. And then when you felt like this was a little a little too much grating on the nerves, you'd swap over something like Sixpence None the Richer or a myriad of different types of singers out there. And it was nice. It was a great thing to just curl up to after a long day of, you know, being neglected by your classmates, parents, and everybody else. This was the, the epitome of the 90s to me was like Smashing Pumpkins. Mm. So when I found out that they had released a new album, as I said, I got super excited because it was just something I was really looking forward to, going, I get to relive the 90s again! The good parts! The parts I actually genuinely am looking forward to remembering! Yay! And then as I said, based upon previous albums this year, I immediately knew I was making a mistake. (laughs) Because, ugh... I mean, from my perspective, I've never been that into Smashing Pumpkins. I could take them or leave them. But I was always able to go, yeah, they've got their own sound. They have their own identity, all that sort of thing. And then I listened to this album and I was sort of like, is this is this Smashing Pumpkins or just a sampler for other bands? Okay, what I'm about to say is going to sound really horrible. And I do apologize to anybody and everybody who's gone through this, but there have been several of my favorite bands that have more or less cleaned up. And I don't mean as in cleaned up, you know, through drugs or what have you. It's just they've changed enough in their life that they no longer present the same sound and sensations and whatnot with their music. Uh, Blue October's done that, which good for him. I mean, he went through some serious hell. I'm glad to see where he's at. But their music no longer really fits in my life. So thus, I'm not a huge fan of their newer styles of music. I'm glad that they are personally in a better place, but I just don't really feel like the music's for me anymore. Then you got like, say, Shinedown, which can go suck a bag bag of dicks. Because Jesus Christ, they went off the deep end this year. (laughs) And other bands like that, where they started out as one thing changed enough in their life they no longer felt it represented themselves 
And rather than renaming the band into something new to attract a new following for their new sound, just drug us all the opposite direction, which I think is kind of unfair from a, you know, from a listener's standpoint. You start out as, you know, well, Smashing Pumpkins, and now you're ending up in creepy, happy music. Yeah. For the better way to describe it. Yeah, it's just weird, happy music, which doesn't doesn't work with smashing pumpkins i i can't tell anybody from the 90s who's gonna be going oh my god this is amazing unless they've massively changed themselves which i doubt so going through the various songs uh, i'll just list them list the ones that i can name precisely the ones sorry i'll stop probably the ones i can list off as making me think is this some other band? And they've just stolen the track off them? Knights of Malta sounded like Oasis. Oh, God. Like, oh, that was just such a weird opener. I, I swear I was expecting the Gallagher brothers to start arguing midway through it. <laughs> and fuck uh. Oasis. Fuck them hard. I fucking oh, hate on. Oasis. They're a- come on, Wonderwall is wonderful, and uh, what is it? Uh, what is it, Champagne Supernova or whatever? Those are those are wonderful songs. What are you talking about? Oasis is great. Just ignore the two brothers trying to kill each other. <laughs> no, seriously, they're a poor man's poor man's Beatles ripoff band. And to be honest, I'm not that into the Beatles. I know I'm pretty shit as a as an Englishman for not being that into the Beatles. But f- what the fuck? I clearly I'm just garnering all the hate, all of the heat. Apparently, I'm calling upon my wrestler heel image. Just hate me. <laughs> But but yeah, Edmund, Edmund, Edmund. No, no, no. See, that's that's not fair. You shouldn't be saying fuck the Beatles because the Beatles were perfectly fine for the first few years. After the first few years and a lot of LSD and acid, they started to go a little off on the weird side. Mm. But before that, they were fine. Yeah. You know, when they were just a bunch of kids from Liverpool just trying to get laid. I mean, they were fine back then. Mm. So call it what it is. Yeah. Um. Next, you've got Silvery Sometimes parentheses ghosts which was just weak source bollocks that was like a killer song that they went nah <laughs> uh, is it bad that most of this just just blended into just depression to me and the only one i can genuinely remember offhand was actually the last track <laughs> oh i mean yeah like like okay When you come to an album, it's kind of like telling a story. You need a solid opener to get their attention, Mm. good filler to keep it going so people are interested, and then a wonderful ending. Like, the best albums have a great opener, a solid middle, and an excellent end. So at the very end of it, you're like, fuck, I want to listen to some more from these guys. Yeah. That did not happen here. Like, their last track. Oh, my God. I was listening to it going, okay... Okay, and then it just ends, and you're like, "Wait, that that's the last track." I'm free. Oh wait, that's not how I'm supposed to be feeling right now. What the hell was that? Just uh, why? Yeah, just so many questions of why. Yeah, it's so. I mean, the one that really pissed me off. Like, there were three tracks that I could go. Eh, it's all right. You'll probably get into raging for me saying that, but... I'm just accepting at this point that all of my heroes are dead. (laughs) But the one that really pissed me off was Alienation. Because you know what that made me think? What's that? I'm a freak. I'm a weirdo. Get this shitty Radiohead ripoff out of here. It don't belong here. That's all I was thinking. It was just them doing a freak cover without doing freak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just... uh, I hated this album so much. This is one of those ones where I actually did hit skip a few times. I couldn't even go through... I couldn't even sit through it. 
Just it was like, wow, this is bad. Skip. Oh, this is even worse. Oh, God, skip. This is even worse. Skip. Okay, we're second to last track. All right, I'll just let it play and just accept it. <laughs> oh, cool. We're on the last. What the fuck was the last track? That was the entire experience. The entire time, I was actually genuinely hoping I would get to my destination while working, mm. just so I could get out of the car and away from the music. <laughs> yeah, like, the the three tracks that I was able to go, eh, they're all right. Um, Solera, I think that was just, my expectations were so lowered that I was sort of like, yeah, this, this is okay. I mean, it kind of sounds like Muse. Muse, I'm very 75-25 on when I don't like them to when I do like them. Yeah, Muse isn't half bad. Just I'm more a fan of Muse's instrumentation than their songs in and of themselves. Yeah. Like, I really like the instrumentation in Knights of Sidonia. I'm not going to fault that, but I'm not a fan of his vocals most of the time. But none the more for that. That's a rant for another time. Maybe when we review a Muse album. <laughs> no, I'm scared of Muse. <laughs> You're gonna fear everyone by the time I'm through with you. But but 2019's coming. Maybe the bands won't be retarded for the next year. Uh, um, marching on. That was okay. I mean, it kind of reminded me of better Foo Fighters songs. Um, again, not that much of a fan of Foo Fighters. So. This album is quite categorically not for me. I don't think it's for anybody who used to listen to them at all. Well, because the stark difference in tone over the last 10 years for for these guys has just drastically shifted. I think it's because either he's tried to change enough in his life that he doesn't feel like his old style matched up with his new life or... If he just wasn't getting the record sales, and he figured he'd just try to, uh, you know, match mainstream, mainstream like styles, or what is entirely his thought process was. I just go back to the old ways. I mean, if you need to go buy a clump of cocaine and you know a dime bag or two, then just go do it. You know, I'm sure your body will handle. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I don't want to be responsible for anyone making really bad life choices. I feel, I feel like we should include. Go, go hang out at a methadone clinic and talk to the people there, and then feel their pain <laughs> and write music about it. I feel like we should. Because have... if you can't channel it yourself, then then yeah. Go to a methadone clinic, talk to the people there, remember the pain you suffered when you were younger, I'm assuming, allegedly, and then write about it. Relive that, relive that pain. People need an outlet. You're not providing the outlet I need, man. Come on. I feel like we should have a disclaimer for that. That's just saying. We do not condone doing drugs or any other illegal activity sort of like billy is genuinely joking we do not advocate drug abuse of any sort yes we do we we do all the drugs children do every drug out there all of them Sudafed, um tylenol uh you know uh, especially am pm both of those are really good um i also do abdicate of course to take your vitamins but only when given a given authority authority Authorization from your doctor, of course, take uh, antibiotics as prescribed by your doctor. All the drugs, do all the drugs, kids, but not not the ones you buy on the street. You know, th those are bad drugs. Don't, don't, don't do those. But um, definitely get all of your vaccinations. You know, obviously that's a very important drug to take is all your vaccinations. Don't be an anti vaxxer. Um, of course, when someone tries to slip you a Mickey, obviously take that. That's always good for your health. Um, <laughs> And now I've dipped back into bad. <laughs> you you went you were starting to go into wholesome territory, and then you zipped right back round. I'll be surprised if anyone even knows who the fucking Mickey is who listens to this. I don't think they've been called a Mickey since the eighties, nineties, nineties. Okay, well, it, there you go. it comes yeah. up in um, Seinfeld. Any of you kids who were born after the nineties, then you're probably not going to know what that is, and it's okay. You don't have to because. No one calls them that anymore. If you like, if it's like, yeah, kids, come on down and smoke the devil's lettuce. It's good for you and good for the economy. Too. Anyway, getting back on track. I don't want to. <laughs> I want to stay here in Badland. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know what to make of this album other than a. Why the fuck is this volume one? B. Why the fuck have you ripped off so many other bands and not done your own thing? C, 
Why have you taken such a weird turn? Indeed. Go away. We don't want you anymore. Change the name and I'll be happy. Like, if well, this was not called Smashing Pumpkins, but instead called um, Brian Price's uh, Hour of Power or whatever the hell you want to call the band, that's fine. Don't masquerade as a favorite band of mine from the 90s and give me this, okay? That's all I ask. If you want to be a new band, that's cool. I'll review you and go, wow, oh, this is just not for me. But don't tread on my childhood, man. Now, I'm going to clarify before anyone goes, oh, you're just angry because they've changed, or, or any of that sort of gatekeeping bullshit that people try to pull. No, we are not angry because they changed. We are angry because they don't sound like Smashing Pumpkins. There is a difference between changing, developing your sound, modifying it, evolving with the times, and then there's this, which is mutation. It'd be along the lines of, of trying to defend Mariah Carey if she came out and sounded like Linkin Park. Yeah. That's not acceptable. I mean, if you want to, that's cool. New name. You don't just get to keep the name, because if you keep the name, all of your fans are going to be scratching their heads going, why is she sounding like Linkin Park versus sounding like Mariah Carey? That's what I'm trying to get across. Perfectly fine if she want if not she yes now the lead singer of Smashing Pumpkins is a lady. Um, <laughs> it's, it's perfectly fine if if you know if the uh, the band here wants to change their style. Mm. That's fine. Just new name. I mean, you can still even tell your fans, hey, we've created a pet project. It's called you know Smashing Tangerines because we're we're trying a new sound. Come listen to us. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Zippity pow pow pow. Yeah, and that's fine. Just don't do such a drastic turn and then go, it's perfectly fine. You can just listen to us and we'll perf no. Like I was saying earlier about Devin Townsend doing a side project called Casualties of Cool. And that was a jazz country fusion style album. He didn't go under the name Devin Townsend or Devin Townsend Project or Devin Townsend Band or declaring that it was the new Strapping Young Lad album, which really would have pissed people off because it, it would be a case of, you choked us around for like 20 years saying you're never doing Strapping Young Lad again and this is what you bring out. No, he did a new name. He did a new sound with that new name. And that was fine because he wasn't... It's it's a case of false advertising, you know. You're told this is a Smashing Pumpkins album. You're not getting Smashing Pumpkins. If Devin Townsend had just released it as Devin Townsend, we'd all be going... Well, hang on, this doesn't sound like anything else you've released under your solo name. So let's go back and talk about the Beatles. <laughs> <'cause>... <laughs> uh, let's stick the yeah, landing. Is there, is there, I was going to say, is there anything else you want to want to bring up at this point other than please don't do this ever again? Um, the only thing I really have to comment on left is the fact that I'm worried by the fact that this is meant to be volume one. I'm just hoping that that's just a, a hopeful concept and that it doesn't come to fruition. And that if he does release a volume two, that it's more of a return to form, more of a return to original style. I know that's not going to happen, but I can hope. Yeah, I mean... Because, I mean, you know, if he releases a second album, you know, volume two, uh, LP, uh, A Fast, Lots of Future, Many Sons, or whatever the hell he wants to call the, the second part of this... That's fine. We'll listen to it. I'll probably openly weep. Unless I somehow change my mind on what I expect him to sound like, because now that I've been poisoned. Oh, God. It's starting, isn't it? Next, I'm going to like Diablo Hunt Diablo Immortal. Oh, God. Nah. Um, uh, I think... Okay, so overall... Yeah, we might as well give this a score. What would you give it out of five? Um, because of what I genuinely loved from the original Smashing Pumpkins, this is going to get like a two. Yeah. Just, you know, if, if it wasn't Smashing Pumpkins, if this was released by anybody, mm. you know, just Joe Blow or whatever, 
probably would have been a higher score just because I wouldn't have had a completely different expectation. Mm. But because of who these guys are, what I know they can do and what I know they have done, it gets a two. It's it's not worth checking out. Check it out on YouTube and cringe if you like their original style. If you're looking for a hot new young pop band, then by all means, check this out. It'll be about a three out of five. Yeah. And from my perspective, going by a sort of a compare and contrast, it's sort of like, okay, not generally a fan of Smashing Pumpkins, but I know what they can do. I know their style. I know what I was expecting them to sound like. Yeah, too. Because this isn't this isn't up to snuff. This is regurgitated, recycled bullshit from cast-offs from other bands. That's the only impression I get, that they listen to other bands. They listen to Oasis, The Killers, Foo Fighters, Muse. They listen to those bands. Like, that's half the album I'm able to say sound like other bands. That's not a good sign when half the album doesn't even sound specifically like the Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. So, yeah, two out of five. Rolling Stone's comment about it is pretty spot on. It's the Smashing Pumpkins in name only, and that ice cream truck has long left the gas station. Yeah. I... Just, wow. Yeah, well, hooray to another eight tracks coming to you live from Smashing Pumpkins and stuff. Woo! Yeah. I mean, the, the faint praise I can give it is at least it does actually sound... In terms of sound quality, it sounds all right because, but that's <laughs> they did not record this on an accordion in the middle of a bathroom. Yeah, but that's probably because they've got Rick Rubin producing it. Yeah, I'm still wondering what exactly happened. Uh, Get back on your heroin! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, kids. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh. Raining it back in, rain it back in. So I don't want to. Why are you doing this to me? Why why are you doing this to me? Because your suffering is like uh, candy to me. It, it genuinely must be. Because I think the next album you're gonna find is gonna be like, alright, what's another one of your childhood heroes? Let's ruin another one. <laughs> but anyway. That's it for this episode. Don't forget, kids, to like, subscribe, and, of course, click that bell button to continue to hear such wonderful commentary from me and Edna where we discuss the importance of childhood alcohol abuse. <laughs> and if you want to support said discussions, then please visit our Patreon, where there are many things that are upcoming for rewards, like special logos that you can commission from me, and... Oh. He will actually give you a cat. That's right. He will mail you a cat in the mail. <laughs> it might be a picture of a cat. It might be a live cat. You don't know. But come on over to patreon.com forward slash Drayhawk. And you can also commission us to review an album. Any album. Any genre. It can be futile monks wailing if you so wish. Ooh. That sounds cool. Yes, please, someone request that. Mongolian but. throat singing. Um, <laughs> someone singing about their flower pot for three hours. We'll find a way to cover that. But we will never, ever, ever cover this album again. <laughs> Until we do. But anyway, that's it for this episode. I've been Edmund Scrivens. I've been a depressed 17-year-old trapped in a 38-year-old's body. Also known as Billy Sant. We're marching on! No, we're not. Sayonara, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>